Hey guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Ankush here from Alif Consulting. Welcome in our Azure Migrate video. In this video, we will be specifically going to talk about the migration part of GCP Virtual Machine to Azure Virtual Machine. Well, in our last two videos, we understood how we can discover, uh, do the discovery of a GCP instance how we can do the assessment of a GCP instance. In this specific video, we will be going to talk about how we can do the migration of a GCP instance to the Azure Virtual Machine, right? So this video is going to be in two parts. The first part is where you, we will be going to understand or we will be going to set up a replication appliance and deploy the configuration server, which is a very primarily uh, the very important part to replicate the GCP instance uh, from GCP to Azure. The second one is the mobility service or the mobility agent, which is a very important part to <coughs> replicate actual data inside of VM from GCP to Azure, right? And then we're going to enable the VM replication for this and we're going to showcase you how you can track and monitor the replication status. In our next video, we're going to run the test migrations. We're going to see how the test migration can give you the benefit to validate your images or the replications and then we're going to run the full migration of a GCP instance to the Azure, right? So there is a two videos is going to be. Now, in this video, there's a few things which you need to keep in mind, right? So first of thing, you need to create a discovery in uh, Azure Migrate where you need to specify in which reason you want to migrate your uh, virtual uh, machines from GCP to Azure and then from there you need to basically set up what kind of uh, environment it's going to be what kind of appliances is going to be and then from there you you basically need to download the setup and do the configuration of the uh, replication appliance into the GCP machine right at the same time you need to make sure you have a separate VM on the GCP to install uh, this replication appliance and the configuration server Now, if you go into the GCP uh, console, you will see I have a one dedicated VM, uh, which is specifically uh, I'm going to use for the migration, right? And this is the VM which is going to have all the, uh, the, the, the services of the migration, like the uh, replication appliance and the configuration server, right? At the Azure side, what you need to do? You need to do the discovery, right? Where you will be going to set up uh, or select the which reason you want to migrate or replicate your VM and then it's going to deploy the further resources for that specific reason. Now, in my case, I already have uh, selected the target reason, which is going to be West US. Now, one important thing you need to keep in mind, once the region is selected uh, into the Azure Migrate project, project, you would not be able to change it. So keep in mind, right? So I have already selected the West US, which means my VM is going to be replicated into the West US and it have already created the recovery vault which is going to be used for replication right so there's recovery vault key vault every resources has been already created into the west us right that's something you can verify by opening a duplicate tab now in the duplicate tab if you go to the all resources you would be able to see there are a plenty of resources has been deployed by uh by by uh, azure migrate right so in actual there is only a two. However, if you go into the resource group or if you click on show height types, you would be able to see there are plenty of the projects which is already there, right? So once that has been done, you need to again go to the discovery. You need to select your uh, machine types or virtualization type, target region and what kind of appliance is going to be, right? So we have a two option, right? First is the uh, installer replication appliance or second one is a install a scale out appliance now what is the difference in difference in both of them now if you are installing a replication uh, appliance first time you always need to select the first option right if you're installing a more application appliance or more process server or the configuration server in your environment then you need to select the second option which is a install a scale out appliance right so first as soon as you selected your option it's going to uh, give you the option to download the setup for appliance software and that's going to option uh, it's going to give you the option to download the registration key which is the very important part to register your Azure ASR 
replication appliance to the recovery world or to this Azure Migrate project. Right. So this is my client VM and this is my actual VM where I have uh, already downloaded my unified setup. I already have downloaded my credentials. Right. Now you just need to uh, click on the setup file. It's going to extract itself and then from there it's going to run and we need to put or we need to set up a, a f the few things or we need to put few information to register or install the Azure recovery appliance or, uh, or the configuration servers in this VM. All right. So the first option is what kind of installation is going to be since this is my first uh, configuration or process server in the environment. So I'm going to select the first option else if I'm adding additional uh, server into the environment, then we need to select the second one. Now it's asking me to accept the terms and condition for my MySQL uh, because that's the server it's going to use for database. And it's asking me for the registration key. As I told you, the registration key is going to be very important part to register your uh, uh, this appliance uh, to the Azure Migrate project. So I already have downloaded the key. So I'm going to use that for the registration. That's going to ask me for the internet setting. So since I don't have any proxy, so I'm going to use my first option where I don't want to use the proxy server. Now it's going to validate all the pre checks which is there so the, it's going to see if everything has been fully available or everything is passed right this is my test environment hence i'm not going to focus on the warning however if you're running this in a production you need to make sure all of these prerequisites should be turned into the green right now it's asking us to set up the mysql password So once the password is set up, click on next. Now here it's asking you, do you also want to protect the VMware virtual machine? In my case, I don't have any virtual machine hosted on the VMware environment. Hence, I'm selecting it no. However, in your real environment, this scenario might be there where you having your VMware environment also. So you can select it. However, when you're migrating from cloud, from GCP, from AWS to Azure, then this option is not valid. Now, what is the location of the installation is going to be? So I'm selecting the default location. However, you can also change the installation location of this ASR server. Now, there's a two communication is going to be. One is the communication which is going to be with the other server within the GCP cloud, which is deployed into the same virtual network. And the second one is to the Azure, right? You can select or you can have a multiple NICs uh, in your environment and then you can select the particular NIC for the particular communication. However, in my case, I already have a one NIC which I'm going to use for the communication at the both end. Now you need to see if all of these things has been uh, fully uh, configured and everything is uh, correctly configured because once you click on installation, you would not be able to move forward. Now click on installation. It's going to download few things it's going to download mysql i already have installed mysql on this machine uh, so it's going to skip this option the rest of the configuration or rest of the option which is there would be done by this setup now it's installing the ias it's installing the third party component which is required there so this process is going to take a time we need to wait for this process to get completed and then we would be able to move forward to do the further steps.
so this process is going to take almost uh, 10 to 15 minutes so we have to wait to this process to get completed and then we'll be, we will be going to move forward and the next step is going to add the credentials into this ASR server so that that credential can be used to a uh, use for replication second step is going to be to install the mobility agents on the client machine to enable the replication on those machines So since this installation is basically in progress, so let's me do let's go ahead and do one thing which is a very important. Let's uh, go ahead and uh, set up a user on the client machine since that user will be used by ASR for the production and the further configuration on the VM. So yeah, let's me go back. So this is my client machine and uh, let me go to the MMC console. 
and uh, I already have a one user I think which is uh, there uh, and uh, that user I'm going to use it for uh, for the further uh, thing right further uh, configuration so yes let's go ahead and reset the password of that user uh, and this is the user which I'm going to use so yeah let's reset the password of this one Okay, the minimum Okay, that's nice I hope this time is safe Okay, so password has been resetted. I'm going to use this password uh, as a for credentials. Now it's on the other tab on the SS server. It's still doing the installation of the third-party component. Now one important thing is there. Once the installation is configured, or once the installation of uh, the SS server has been done, we need to go into the uh, into this uh, this uh, SR. Uh, sorry the program data and here we need to go into the Microsoft look for uh, ASR okay so looks like we still don't have any ASR folder available in the Microsoft because uh, the configuration is still in progress right so yeah, let's wait this configuration to get completed and then only we would be able to move forward. So as of now, it's still stuck down installing the third party components, which is uh, required uh, to move forward. So yeah, let's wait this third party uh, component installation to be get finished and then it's going to install the further component which is required. Alright, so the installation of the third party component has been successfully done. Now it is installing the configuration and the process server. And then once that has been done, it's going to install uh, the recovery site recovery provider on this machine.
all right guys it's still taking a lot more time uh, to just install the configuration and the process server so once the third sorry the fourth step is done then it's going to be uh, move forward with the next step and then further right so please uh, bear with us uh, we don't have any option right now actually so we just need to wait uh, to get this installation process to be get completed and uh, then only we would be able to move forward
so guys this is taking a lot more time than what I have uh, expected so we just need to wait uh, to get this whole process completed and then only we would be able to move forward so yeah just let's let's wait for this and uh, please uh, be, with, be with us on this
all right guys so finally uh, the installation of uh, configuration and the process server has been completed now it's installing the uh, the master target server which is uh, going to be part of uh, of the the vm replication also so yeah we need to wait for that and uh, hopefully it's going to be a quick this time for rest of the task All right, so installation of uh, the master target server is done. Now it's configuring the master target servers. Uh, uh, so yeah, once the configuration is done, it's going to install the Microsoft recovery service agent, and then it's going to register the this site recovery server, uh, site recovery uh, with this server actually with the site recovery, and then it's going to at the last step is going to be to validation of the server configuration right so as of now all the roles the required roles has been successfully installed the only part is the installation of the recovery agent and the registration and the validation which is pending as of now All right, so installation of uh, the recovery service agent is uh, successfully completed. Now it's registering the uh, site recovery. Uh, uh, it's registering the server with the site recovery actually. Once that has been done, it's going to validate the server configuration, right? Uh, so the meanwhile, what we can do, see as soon as doing in a backend, we can uh, go into uh, this host configuration so both of these things would not be available until unless the registration has been done uh, so yeah we we need to wait for registrations to be get completed and then only we would be able to add the credentials we need to add those accounts to get connect the vm so that the recovery server can connect with the vm and use those uh, credentials to you know pick up or uh, gather the informations or, or the, gather the uh, the snapshot of the vms right so let's wait for this process to be get completed and uh, then we will move forward
all right so the registration of uh, this server with site recovery is successfully done now it's doing the final step where it's validating the server configuration right so once the validation of the server configuration has been done it's going to give us the passkey uh, now the passkey is very important thing because when you are installing the mobility agent or the mobility service on the client machine that passkey agent or the passkey file is required for required for uh, uh, to required for the registration right so first of all let me go ahead and uh, uh, create a file and give it a name passkey right control cost control v and save this file right now the first step is going which we need to add is sorry uh, this is the one no, why this is let me refresh this one is it already open yes uh, sorry it's already open that's the reason it's not allowing me so the first thing is we need to add the account so the account is mig the username is going to be admin user password is what i have set up so it looks like i have Right. password has been successfully added let's go back to the configuration detail right uh, this is the configuration detail so yeah we are okay with that right so what is the next step is going to be right so first of all let us go ahead and uh, check the client machine IP so it's 10 dot 0.0.3 right so let's go back and uh, do the network browsing so it's asking me for the credential credential is what I have set up so yes let me login with that credentials right let me put everything on the on the on the user what to user I have used uh, so I'm using the admin user so let sorry uh, I'm using the demo user uh, for the login on the client machine so yes let's put everything on the desktop this is the passkey which I'm going to use now what I need to do I need to then grab the ASR agent so the ASR agent location is going to be under the C program right in the program file C program data in the program data it's going to be into the ASR in the ASR it's going to be into the agent In the agent it's going to be into the en no not here so where is the agent right no, it should not be into the agent asr it should be in home system 
it should be into the pin. EN, no, it's not here. So, where is it? Yes, push installation. Yep, here. Uh, it should be in a system push installation, and uh, here is it, right? So, this is the agent which we need to copy. This is the Windows agent. We do have a further agent for the other VMs, right? Which we can copy here. And this is the path. It should be in uh, program data slash ASR slash home slash S, uh, SV system slash uh, push install SVC and then repository, right? So let's copy this one, minimize this and paste here. Right. So once your ASR agent is copied, what you need to do? Go back to the client machine. Right. And if you go to the client machine, you see all the agents has been available here. Now open the command prompt from here. All right, uh, it's not running from here. So what we can do to open the command prompt, uh, we can open the Explorer. So this is the command which we need to run. We can go to the desktop. Let's Looks like this client machine is too much slow. Come on, man. Let's search for command from here. This GCP machine is too much slow, man. All right, open for command from. Copy the path from here. So go to the C desktop. Right. The first command is going to be this to sorry uh, to extract uh, this mobility agent into the into the temporary folder. Now install the mobility agent it's going to be install the silent installation of the mobility agent in the backend right so it's installing now what is the next step is going to be the next step is going to be is this so what is the need to done we first need to define the the private IP of the appliance, right? So let's go back to the GCP console and see what is the migration appliance private IP. It's 10.0.0.4. So yes, let's go back and 10.0.0.4. This is my IP of uh, the appliance, right? And uh, So the component is installing, the whole installation is going on. Meanwhile, let's set up the other thing and then it's going to be the, the pass key of the file, right? So let's go back. Let's copy here. Let's go to the property.
copy this location and then we just need to copy paste this one and need to run this command so this command so the first command is going to extract the mobility agent from the ASR setup the second command is basically going to install the mobility agent and the third command is basically is going to install the mobility agent to the Azure using the site recovery server. All right, so the installation is still in progress. So let's wait this agent to be fully installed and then we would be able to move forward. So this mobility agent is taking a little a long time to install it. So once this installation process is get completed, then we need to register this mobility agent to the ASR server which we have installed and from there it's going to register the server to the Azure, right? So yes, wait for this setup to be get completed. It's just performing the post, post installation steps right uh, so once the post installation step is completed we just need to go ahead and run the registration command to register this this uh, mobility agent with the ASR server
Meanwhile, let's go ahead and validate if anything is happening. Let's go back to the C drive program. Alright, the installation of the mobility agent is taking a longer time than what I have expected. It does not take this much of time, but looks like there was a, some performance issues with this VM, which is causing uh, this much of time. So yes, we just need to wait for this process to be get completed, then only we would be able to move forward. And meanwhile, if we go into the, uh, the installation directory where this agent is getting installed, we will be, uh, we see like the site recovery uh, folder is there the agent folder is already there and uh, hopefully would be able to see all the uh, all the the set of files and everything is there which means the installation of the insert has been there however it's still uh, not able to complete uh, the 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 post checks uh, which is still stuck into the uh, one right so we just need to wait for this post checks to be get completed and uh, then we'll we'll move forward and register the agent right so these are the steps which we need to get completed to have our uh, vm successfully registered on the azure Meanwhile, this step has been stuck. What we can do, we can open uh, uh, the one more command prompt and we can run the registration command directly there. So looks like uh, this process has been stuck. So what I'm doing, I am uh, simply running uh, the uh, the registration command directly. Uh, I'm not waiting this uh, whole process to be get uh, completed, right? So I already have opened my notepad. So I already have put all the informations there on the notepad. So yes, let's copy that notepad, paste the command here and move forward
so yeah, this is the command which I need to run for registration all right so it's giving me the access denied because I have not run my command prompt as a administrator so yeah let's go for the search window search for command prompt and uh, run it as a administrator so run it as administrator So all right, installation is also successfully done, which means we can move forward now. So yes, uh, the next step is for the registration. So yes, let's. Uh, I have run the command prompt as an administrator because uh, when I'm not running it, it's having the permission issues. It's not able to move forward and go into the installation directory. So yeah, this is the thing, right? I need to provide uh, the 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 ASR server private IP I need to provide the pass case everything need to be done so it says invalid configuration and the pass key has been provided okay all right configuration and the pass key path file has been given Most probably this might be the issues because that's what I'm thinking is somehow let it's not able to re get the file. Alright, so finally it's a read the file. Now it's uh, registering the server with the ASS server. Once this registration has been completed, our work is going to be done here. We need to go into the portal and now we need to register the server or configure the server for the migration, right? Now the configuration from the server side and from the client side has been successfully configured. Let's come back to the Azure portal, right? So once you refresh this option, you would be see uh, the server is successfully available here. You would be able to see the server which we have registered as a ASR server is now showing available here. So you will see, right? So this is the server. You just need to click on uh, finalize the registration. Once you finalize the registration, uh, it's going to run few checks on all the information which is uh, which has been came from uh, uh, from the ASR server. And once all of those things has been done or for the finalization has been done from the Azure site, we would be able to protect or start the replication of the VM using the ASR server.
all right so this registration is again uh, going on the finalization of the registration is still going on uh, we need to wait for this uh, registrations to be get completed and then only we would be able to protect the vm using the asr server which we have configured in this video All right, so the finalization of this has been done. Registration and configuration has been successfully done. Now, what is the next step? The next step is going to be to the protect the VM, right? To do that, what we need to do? Our discovery part is done. Now, what we need to do? It's we need to do the replication, right? Now, first you need to click on the replication. You need to select what is your source is going to be, what is your destination is going to be. In our case, source is going to be the server in the virtual machine and destination is going to be the Azure VM. You need to click on next. You need to select if your VMs are virtualized. Yes, they are virtualized and they are on physical and the other. You need to select the appliance from where you want to protect it. What is your process server? What is your guest credentials which you want to use for the protection? Right? What is your assessment is going to be? Right? I don't want to do any kind of assessment anything. I am okay to move forward without any assessment. Now this is the VM which I want to protect. Click on next. Select the resource group where you want to move it. Select the cache account, select the virtual network. All of these things has been required, right? So if you see I don't have any virtual network which means I will not be able to move forward so what is the things we need to go into the east us we need to go into the west us too and we need to create a network right so let's quickly go ahead and create a virtual network uh, I have opened the Azure portal into the uh, into the uh, duplicate tab right so let's quickly go ahead and create a one uh, network right so yes let's use the default setting because you need to have a network uh, that's a primary basic requirement uh, for the VMs to be run on the Azure or on the any of the cloud right some of the cloud like GCP and Azure gives you the predefined uh, network which are already available or which are already created can be used. However, in Azure, that's not a case. You always need to create your own virtual network to create a VM into the Azure, right? So it's running the final validation. Once the validation is completed, we would be able to click on create and move forward uh, to create the virtual machine. All right, the validation is successfully done. I'm just, I've just clicked on the create button. So it's finalizing, initializing the deployments and submitting the deployment and boom, the virtual network is got created, right? So we need to give it a few seconds to get this virtual network created on Azure. So the virtual network has been successfully deployed. Now let's go back to our first step. 
go to the previous one select the VM go next now we would be able to see the network right no we are still not able to see the network so what we need to do we just need to refresh this page or we need to start the process from the beginning right so our virtual uh, our uh, your virtual machine our virtual machine virtualized no we are selecting or migrating from uh, from gcp so it's going to be the physical another this is our the appliance this is our process server this is our credentials now do we want to import any assessment no we don't want to uh, do the assessment i want to import it i will specify the migration setting manually select the vm click on next select the resource group select the network select the subnet select the availability options if you want to enable the hybrid benefits sql extensions what kind of encryption is going to be selected click on next select the vm name select the sizing right so this is something which you can select it out it's automatically based on the machine configuration or do you specifically want to do the any particular sizing to this vm i am just picking up from automatically select the main matching configuration click on next sorry next select the disk so i am selecting the standard as ready however these kind of change this changes can be done later on as well the vm sizing change or disk changing can be done on later on as well define the tagging if you want click on next and click on replicate right so as soon as you have uh, uh, click on replicate it's going to do the uh, the further configuration it's going to configure the vm into the azure it's going to configure uh, the replication of the vm into the recovery vault and then from there we would be able to see the status of the replication right so as soon as the replication is enabled it's going to take a time a base on the size of the vm so let's take an example we have a one tb of the size of the vm in that case it's going to take a lot more time if we have a vm size which is less than 100 gb it's going to take a less time right so again uh, everything is depend on base on the uh, on the on the size of the vm right so as of now the process of uh, replication is not started yet as of now it's just deploying the basic requirement to enable the replication at the azure side right so we just need to wait uh, to get this deployment completed as soon as the deployment is completed we would be able to monitor the replication status of the vm which we are replicating from gcp to azure all right so the deployment of uh, the vm has been successfully done now it's have started the replication of the vm right so how we can monitor the replication we just need to go on the overview and here we can see the status of the vm right whatever the vm status is what are the replication everything can be visible here now it's, you say there is a replication so if you click on this one you would be able to see what are the machine what is the status of the machine and what is going on so as of now the vm is in uh, in, in enabling the, uh, the this replication right so as of now it's in a, enabling the replication status however as soon as the vm has successfully started a replication uh, the status of this is going to be changed now it's going to be like 10% 12% 20% 50% 70% 100% as soon as uh, the status is fully uh, replication is or 100% replicated all of the further option would be available which we are going to talk into the next video right so this is the first way of uh, 
checking the replication status of the VM. The second option is we can go into the recovery vault and from there we can see. So let's uh, go into the recovery vault, change the subscription and this is the recovery vault which we have created for uh, GCP migration, right? If you go into the replicated item, here you would be able to see what is the replication status is, right? So as of now, the replication status is showing the zero, which means the replication has been not started yet. It's just configured successfully. However, the replication is still going on. And this is the graph map of how the VM is basically replic replicating to Azure, right? So we have a two ways. One way is the Azure Migrate, which is a unified way of seeing everything like a deployment assessment at the migration at the one console or second is we can go into the uh, Azure recovery vault and we can view the replication status of the VM. Right. So these are the tasks which we have done. The only task which is pending right now is the test migration, the full migration, which we are going to do into the next video. Right. So this concludes our demo in this video. I hope you like this video. If you like, please click on like and subscribe for more upcoming videos and feel free to reach us if you have any questions. Thank you.